up in the loop? Kenny here, checking in with a new video today from Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm gonna try something a little different today. Uh, if you're a regular to the channel and you tune in to watch a lot of uh, theme park and cruise, zoo, museum, all these sort of touristy attraction videos that we tend to do here on the channel. This is not gonna be one of those. Uh, today we're gonna try something a little new actually at Daytona International Speedway. Uh, I am a huge NASCAR fan, have been my entire life, and I uh, figured why not try something that uh, I, at least I've certainly never done for the, for the channel here, uh, and I'm not sure, to my knowledge, I don't think we've done many, if any, uh, sporting venue videos. So I'm gonna basically walk around, it's the morning of the Daytona 500 here, um, gonna try to capture in this video at least the best I can uh, a little bit of the environment that is a NASCAR race. We'll, we'll show off the the main midway area out front with all of the sponsor tents and all the uh, merchandise haulers, gift shops and whatnot. And then we'll go up and show off the, the concourse in the grandstands and we'll even make our way down to the infield and check out the the fan zone and some of the, the crazy rowdy campers that have been here all weekend to <laughs> get some of that awesome NASCAR tailgating uh, and then even a little bit of a Dirk Bentley concert so let's head in and uh, let's see what this is all about here today and so it begins so as we start to get into the uh, concourse down here got a stage over here there's some sort of a dance competition or something going on here but uh come up to this first tent any NASCAR event um, it's a long-standing tradition uh, a lot of merchandise all the teams sell all their merchandise a lot of track merchandise t-shirts and flags and whatever magnets all sorts of any any of that kind of fun stuff but there's kind of two ways to go about this traditionally they uh, would set up these Sort of truck haulers that I'll I'll get over here to in a in a minute, but they sort of uh, about 10 years ago condensed a lot of that down and got rid of a lot of that and went to these big sort of pit shop tents. But then the fans sort of wanted the uh, trailers back for good reason. It's kind of cool. It's kind of unique. We'll take a look at those here coming up. But uh, yeah, just getting started here in the concourse. There's a lot of uh, displays for different brands. A lot of sponsor activation goes on at these events. Um, just a lot of companies show up and set up a tent and pass out free samples and try and engage with all the fans. And, you know, NASCAR's uh, traditionally, even if you don't know anything about the sport, I'm sure you at least know the cliche, they try to fit as many sponsors. You, you look at a race car or a driver's uniform and there's sponsor nailer. I mean, this guy's Bush Light shirt. Look how many sponsors are on that thing. Um, and all of those sponsors, they come out and they set up in these concourses. You see a bunch of these tents over here. And it's basically just walking through a whole slew of people trying to sell you things. But some of them have some pretty cool games. Uh, fun things to try out, look at. You always get free stuff, so you walk through here with a bag and just collect all the free crap you can. It's kind of fun. Here's the first example of one of those haulers, those merchandise haulers I was talking about. Now, some of the teams, they'll come out and they'll have just a specific driver will have an entire trailer dedicated to that driver and team but sometimes they'll take like hendrick motorsports here they'll just make a sort of general trailer with all four of their cars have all their merchandise in there and then sometimes you get lucky they'll post a, a time on a board out front these drivers will come out and they'll sign autographs so you buy some stuff at their trailer and then meet the driver and have them sign it it's good times um if you've never been to a race i always tell everybody who comes to one of these things find one of these racing electronic scanner rentals is what these scanner rentals do it allows you to listen to either the radio broadcast 
of the race so you can kind of follow along and understand what's going on because these races are so damn loud you can't hear the PA announcer um, so you can kind of listen in on the radio and understand what's going on or you can tune in and listen to the specific drivers and the radio chatter between them and their team during the race it's kind of cool it's kind of unique it's one of the only sports you can kind of listen in on the uh, teams and athletes mid game if you will so yeah, these uh these rental these rentals are a must. Uh, so find one of these and check them out. I think sometimes these days I think you need to go online and reserve them ahead of time. I think you need to. I don't know if they've gone back to uh, being able to rent them on site. You can buy them here, or you can pre-order, pick them up at the trailer on site. But uh, there's a lot of different options. But it's a must if you're coming to a race. It's a must. I'd like to drive one of these things. What? They'll let me take a remote control and drive one of these bad boys. Get it out in the infield during the race. I think I'd rather take one of these out today. See if I can talk somebody into let me enter the race in this bad boy. Maybe I can be the pace car at least. Chicago Auto Show every year, so it's uh, it's fun to come to a race and get a little bit of two different worlds colliding with the auto show and a major sporting event atmosphere combined. So it always does a really good job with uh, all of their displays everywhere. be a NASCAR race without large amounts of available alcohol. That's uh, something I welcome greatly at all of these events. Never have to go far. Never have to go far. There's always alcohol. So I was just told, remember that whole bring a bag to collect free things here? I was just told that the McDonald's display giving out free french fries. So sometimes you come across these really cool ones that give away food and uh, good things that people actually really want and uh, you might have to wait in a little bit of a line. Uh, when we get down to the infield here later, Wendy's is another big sponsor here today and uh, 
they do have a Wendy's restaurant, pop-up restaurant giving away free Wendy's down in the infield. So yeah, man, it's not always just free pens and pins and dumb stuff. Uh, sometimes you get free fast food. So, uh, here's one. This will be funny to uh, fellow staffer here at In The Loop, Andrew Hyde as uh andrew uh we were at we were at talladega we were at another race last year uh talladega alabama and it was a very hot very summer-ish day uh i think it was about 90 degrees and humid and the idahoan mashed potato display was in full effect where again the free samples were in full effect and um bit of a tough sell in a lot of these hot NASCAR races. Go, uh, like, I'll, I'll do french fries, I'll do a, you know, I'll do a Wendy's burger, but um, I don't know. Nothing against the uh, awesome Idahoan potatoes. <laughs> they do make a good mashed potato, but yeah, I always find these funny. Some of these displays, some of these sponsors, um, it's, it's a fun sample and it makes sense but I just gotta laugh at some of them as who is eating mashed potatoes before a hot summer NASCAR race. I think we're about halfway down this uh, front midway area. Uh, it's kind of a real, real pretty front entrance, the main entrance, if you will. Uh, this track is about, it's a two and a half mile racetrack. And so to make the walk, they have stretched this front concourse area all the way along the front of this facility. It is quite a walk. Um, I mean, I don't know, a good mile, mile worth of uh, displays and sponsorship tents set up. So just keep trucking along here. There's plenty, plenty to look at. Not here today. Not here, but if we can get them over here next year. Big anniversary year for NASCAR. Pretty cool little logo they got going on. Got it slapped over all the merchandise everywhere this year. Let's go find me a shirt with one of them on it. So now so we've kind of gotten over here towards the uh, the merchandise haulers. This be a good way to show what I was talking about earlier. You got all these trailers, all the different drivers. Everybody lines up. Find your favorite driver. Buy all of their stuff. Maybe get an autograph if you're lucky enough that they're out here. Um, but then they've got that tent, another one of those tents. So they've actually, I, I kind of like, I mean, I remember when I was younger and you'd come to these races and every single car, every team had their own trailer. And these trailers were just absolutely everywhere when you come to one of these races. Um, but I don't mind the nice blend. I, they've kind of condensed them down and put a lot of the drivers in the same hauler but you still get all of your favorites if you really want to go find them. And then you just go in there and they've got more of you, you know, the individual drivers. I guess we could go in there and I'll, I'll show you. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a nice, if you just want generic race stuff, just uh, generic NASCAR stuff, you go into one of these. So let's go in and I'll, I'll show you what's in here. This is my big issue with these uh, tents, these merchandise tents. They are just so crowded all the time. It's uh, really the big downside to it and why I like the trailers outside a little bit more. The trailers get crowded with long lines too, but these just feel so damn congested. Um, it's kind of hard. I mean, unless you get here on like a Saturday or even a Friday, a lot of these race weekends are two or three days long. You can get here and get a lot of this shopping done the day before. If you wait till Sunday morning on race day, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of this. So, a little harder to show off what they got, but let's see what we can do. Let's go look at some of the event stuff. Uh, never 
seen these before. It's kind of neat. It's got a 75th anniversary kind of a hologram ticket. Uh, these are 35 bucks. They've also got them for the like a like a Daytona 500. Hey. 65th Daytona 500 this year. I don't know. I've never seen those before. Maybe I just never spotted them. Maybe they usually have them, but it's kind of cool. A lot of beer koozies and flags sold at these events. Kind of, uh, you know, it's like required tailgating stuff right there. Got to have your koozies for all that bush light flags to put up on top of your campers or your trucks. That's uh, mandatory for NASCAR. There's a large Did crowd, there's a good chance that uh, talk to yourself or one of the drivers during is out here doing a Q&A. Yeah, I don't know if I talked to like myself we got Noah right now, over here. you're always, he's, he's a goofy guy. I feel like everything one. you're doing, you're, you're talking to yourself in your head, or at least I am. I don't know, I'm, I'm probably pretty squirrely like that, but <laughs> it, uh, it's one of those things where you're, like, especially under caution, you're talking to yourself, okay, I got four or five guys in front of me, I think they're awesome. We ask them, We I usually buy replicas of the trophy for all the team guys, so um, I feel like it, everybody needs replicas of these things. It was $22,000 per trophy. I'm like, oh shoot, we're gonna have to find a different plan. So we got so many replicas made of it, but um, yeah, it's a pretty badass trophy. It's huge, it's heavy. Well, there's a lot of exciting things. Um, and you know, today is, is really cool right now, seeing in Xfinity, I feel like we had a lot of people at the racetrack, a lot of fans come out, and, and I really appreciated that. But I mean, look how many of you guys are out here. We uh, it doesn't it doesn't go uh, unnoticed, and we really appreciate all your guys' support. So um, you know, it's a it's a big myself. Oh, it's, a, it's you're always moving up to the next level, and um, it's going to be way different. But it, it feels. You have been warned. Uh, is that should I eat here? Should I not? I, is that a good thing? I don't know. Somebody's not on your inside. I'm early oh, on pit road. I'm in pit, pit stall 32. So when I get on pit road, I got to look around and make sure that nobody's seen to my inside because I got to make a left. Looks like we've got another driver over here. Eric Almarola. Or they miss your pit box because somebody's inside and they can't get over. So. There's the trophy they win if they win the championship. I can't tell you guys how mentally taxing and draining a race like this is. Pre racer pays off in more time than that. Do you like being a pusher or do you like being the one getting pushed? Um, I tried to get back centered up and shot high out of the fence. So those things can happen so easy. So, but if you're getting the right push, man, it is an awesome feeling to to just get pushed and to blow by everybody when you get that big big shove down the back straightaway. So I like I like both as long as we're going fast. How much do you pay attention to? What in the hell? I don't 
if this uh, this lady needed to catch her own dinner, she might be in trouble. Y'all enjoy the race. More free stuff. Coke Zero Sugar. Free Coke. Look at this damn line to lasso a fake bull. This beef display. Good lord. Uh, so I'm over here by the Budweiser display where I have just overheard somebody yell very enthusiastically to somebody else that they have $4 bush lights. Uh, you know, when, uh, when in Rome, I uh, wouldn't normally drink bush light if my drinking life depended on it, but something changes when I come to NASCAR races and it just kind of works. It just, plus you come to a professional sporting event and uh, find any alcohol for under venue prices uh, onto something good here. But look at what we have here. We have the Budweiser Clydesdales back here. Uh, I can get over here and get a look at one of these because I think one of these bad boys is out right now. I really feel like I'm in a, uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm in Mexico at a bullfight. Very random. Um, anyway, we're, uh, we're getting down towards the end of the outdoor display area. Kind of getting down to the stuff nobody really pays attention to. No offense to eBay Motors or those nicotine pouches back there. But, uh, uh, yeah, so we're kind of out of the big stuff here. We're getting down towards turn one. Now, gonna start heading for the fan zone, but a little bit of very helpful information that I'll pass along that kind of learned this as the weekend's gone on. They, um, they offer these golf cart services uh, free of charge. It's all complimentary and um, some of them are ADA, handicap, uh, but some of them are not. Some of them are just standard go-karts or golf carts. Um, forget the name of it. I'll catch the name of it here at some point. Joyride, that's what it's called. So this Joyride service, the reason I bring this up, if you find yourself here and you have a fan zone pass to go down in the infield, we'll go down and check all that out. I'll show it off in a little bit. There's only one, well, there's two ways to get down there, and it is walk through the pedestrian turn four tunnel, or the, I guess, golf carts can go through there. Um, and then when you get down there, they have trams that will take you because the infield is enormous. Uh, and so it's a lot of walking on foot. So if you don't like walking, or if you're with little kids, or, you know, just people that don't want to walk long, long distances, Grab one of these joyride. This, this joyride service goes all along the front of this place, all the way from turn one to turn four, and they've got multiple pickup areas. And you can either go to turn four and go through that tunnel, or the tunnel at turn one 
is a much bigger tunnel. Uh, a lot of the cars and campers come through that way to go down to the infield. Um, but either way, grab one of these Joyride golf carts and get a ride to the turn one or the turn four tunnel. Uh, and that'll put you in much, much better shape to get down to the fan zone. Otherwise you're in for, I mean, we're talking, it'd take you 45 minutes, an hour, to get all the way from your parking spot all the way up to this facility, get yourself through the tunnel, get into the infield, walk through the infield to the fan zone. It's a, it's a lot. I mean, I don't mind it, but I'm young and healthy and it's fine. But uh, Or even if you just need to save time, grab yourself a golf cart, get over to that shuttle and take that shuttle down. Particular motorized range to be scanned for admission. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy today's race. All right, so uh, down here at turn one, this is the uh, the furthest, this is the end of the grandstand down here, and there's turn one over there. This is the first entrance to get, the, the first uh, gate to get into the grandstands, but that golf cart, that joyride service I was telling you about, drops off right there. And I mean, again, a reminder, uh, all the way down that way, the other tunnel, the turn four tunnel, <clears throat> where these joyride carts go out. I mean, it's over, we're talking over a mile. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we're talking over a mile distance to, uh, you can see way, 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 way off in the distance over there, there's a the Bass Pro Shop store. That's like halfway. <laughs> so grab yourself a golf cart, take that joyride golf cart, get dropped off. You go right here where all these trucks with the trailers these are the trams that will then take you through the turn one tunnel over there into the infield and probably take you another good mile to get to the fan zone so keep all of this in mind it is a it is a hike So we've made it to the uh, tram drop-off. Conveniently, right by that Wendy's I uh, mentioned earlier. Got a <laughs> got a temporary Wendy's down here. Just just cooking food, cooking burgers, fries, passing them out for free, doing the Lord's work down here. Um, you get off the tram, you make a right. And this walk right here. That's the entrance to the fan zone, just behind uh, Pit Road up here. Get in here and. Show you what the garage experience looks like and some of the other stuff they got going on in here over here uh on the right and the fence over here all these big expensive motor coaches uh these are the driver's motor coaches i believe when uh you're done in the fan zone down here uh i would like to personally take a lap or at least a, a partial walk around the infield and show off some of the uh Let's just say weathered uh, campers that have been here all weekend. There's some uh, pretty rowdy people down here. A lot of mustaches, a lot of Dale Earnhardt senior shirts. Um, just a lot of, I, I saw a guy yesterday on the, was taking the tram down here. There was a guy in a full on, like he was up on top of his camper in his lawn chair in his whitey tighties just passed out from the night before beer sitting next to him i mean it was everything i wish i had gotten a picture it was everything you'd think when you think nascar infield tailgating so 
We'll go, we'll try and find some of that, get some free Wendy's and walk around. But first, let's check out the fan zone. All right, so uh, inside the fan zone here. Another one of these pit shop situations. Bunch of food options up there. Big old TV, we got a band performing. The Budweiser Bistro over here, which was much more manageable the last couple of days. Uh, the lines, this is a sold out Daytona 500, so it's gonna be like well over 100,000 people here today. So this is already getting very crowded here race morning, but they got some, uh, some, you know, basic, basic food options. If you don't wanna stand in line for some of the, they got like these food trucks around here, some more specialized, specific things if you're looking for that kind of stuff like wraps or that truck over there there's uh there's some more uh barbecue and stuff over on the other side but if you want more of your just general fare budweiser bistro's got you they've also got a lot of uh their beer selection and the hard liquor if you want that kind of stuff Keep an eye out for this when you come down here. So, over here at the fan deck slash garage experience, this is kind of the centerpiece of the fan zone. Walk around and show you what it's about here. Uh, we'll go up there in a minute, but basically, we've got these garage stalls here where not sure how many of the cars are gonna still be in here, but I think a lot of them are probably out now. I think I got some uh, some video of it from from yesterday and over the rest of the weekend though. But you can walk up to all of these garage stalls and basically watch them work on their cars. So down here by the, the garage viewing windows. Um, race morning, a lot of this is not, this is, I would say this is one thing to, to remember if you plan to come down for the race weekend and you want the fan zone experience, by the time you get to race morning Sunday, a lot of these cars have already been moved out of the garage. I, uh, I have some other video from the rest of the weekend where you can get down here and you can actually see the cars in the different stalls being worked on and whatnot. I'll, I'll cut some of that in here to show you what it looks like when it's in action. But if you plan to come just Sunday for the race and you want that fan zone experience, you might be a little disappointed in what you're gonna get out of it. Um, so just keep that in mind. But yeah, these, these windows right here, you walk up and uh, over the course of the weekend, the cars are in there being worked on. And then they have these little, uh, these little slots underneath the window that if the driver happens to be in there and has some time, they'll kind of drop that little door down and you can put stuff in there for them to sign and they'll sort of do little mini meet and greets. And uh, it's kind of a real unique experience that you can just get super close to the drivers and uh, perhaps get an autograph. Like kids love it, they go nuts. You make a kid's entire weekend and they get their favorite driver's autograph and they get to watch their car get worked on. But yeah, just keep that in mind. This is Sunday morning and a lot of these stalls have been cleared out already. The cars are being staged and getting ready for the race. So if you really want that fan experience, you wanna watch everything in action, maybe plan to be here Saturday. Now when you come upstairs from the garage area, this is the fan deck. This, um, depending on when you're here, if you're here again Saturday, there's more activity on track. You can stand up here and you can see the racetrack, you can see cars practicing. You can technically stay up here and watch the race up here if you want. You got the big TVs down here. And if any cars do come in off the track and need to be worked on, you can see them come down here. This is where uh, you know, they come in off the track over there come down and go into the garage. This is all their haulers over here. So I mean, you could also just kind of stand around up here if you want and try and spot some of your favorite drivers. They're getting ready for the race today. But 
but um, yeah, it's just uh, this fan deck up here. Just another unique observation area. Come up and see things from a different angle than you maybe normally wouldn't. They've got their bars down here or up here on the deck. And yeah, that's kind of the, like I said, it's kind of the centerpiece, the focal point of the fan zone. You can get down here and get a real close up, unique look that you normally wouldn't otherwise see of the drivers and teams getting ready for the race. in the fan zone with kids. Got some stuff to uh, keep them busy in case they get bored looking at race cars being worked on. Might go down there and uh, school these kids on how to shoot hoops and throw some baseballs and footballs. Let's go. Down here in the infield campsite uh this and uh, this is the turn four end of the track down here and i'm gonna go out on a limb and guess this is where the uh there's a lot a lot less money down here we'll call it we'll uh we'll wander over by some of the other high-end motor coach stuff here but i'm guessing this is where the parties are probably or have been all weekend uh Although it seems pretty tame down here today, I think the long weekend has taken its toll. I've seen a lot of really exhausted, hungover looking people. Let's see if we can find anything fun. So, right along this uh, turns three and four, the side of the campground. This is honestly, this is the first time I've ever been down here in this area, which is kind of why I wanted to come down here. I've I have no idea how far in advance you need to book these sites right here, but I'm guessing a lot of these people are probably regulars every year. Uh, but it'd be cool to see, like, if you couldn't get one of these spots right along the inside of the track, you could. It's like you set up shop over here in this little area. But man, this would be a pretty nice little view, I guess, if you wanted to live the infield party lifestyle during the race. We've made it down to the lake in the middle of the track, down here along the back stretch. Got the uh, back stretch all the way down to turn two over there. I believe this is a man-made lake, if I recall correctly. Um, interesting fact if it is true, or maybe I'm making this up, but I'm pretty sure it's true. I think they dug this lake out when they were building the speedway. They used the dirt, or at least some of the dirt to build up the banks around the, the turns here and that's how they ended up with Lake Lloyd back here it's kind of a bummer I wish you could get closer to it now I, I remember growing up watching races where I, I seem to remember a lot more people being around the lake but I'm gonna guess due to drunks falling in the lake uh, <laughs> it's probably best that they've now fenced it off and you can't get close to it but yeah I, I believe there have been a time and two time or two in the past where um, cars have crashed 
going down the back stretch and have made their way into the lake. So it's just kind of a no-go zone now. But yeah, I think that's bringing us to the end of the camp site portion of the infield tailgating. And when we get over around there, it looks like it's just a lot more really expensive campers and motorhomes. Uh, this is way more toned back this morning than I thought. I would, I kind of expected to see more, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was gonna be a little crazier. Like I said, I think people have been burnt out from the weekend. It's been a long weekend of partying. So, I guess let's just keep wandering around, see if we find anything else interesting. I'm gonna stand up Patrick's flag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go out on a limb. Look at that school bus viewing platform over there. Um, I'm thinking that uh, a lot of this down here is uh, probably team sponsor campers uh, back behind this row some restricted area so I'm guessing it's a lot more of that stuff but not going to be as rowdy in this area. But yeah, I think a lot, if you're looking for that rowdy camping, tailgating, infield party experience, I don't, maybe it's just that little turn three and four camp, like tent area. I think the rest of this is going to be big motor homes, um, you know, lots that have got electric and stuff like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little classier. I'm trying to be nice about it, but, uh not going to see maybe maybe all the campsites outside of the racetrack is where you're going to find a lot of that uh tailgating in the parking lot the out outside lots that kind of stuff so a little disappointed didn't see a little bit more crazy down here but chalk it up to it probably all happened over the weekend um yeah i don't know or maybe we just didn't see it Well, that's, that's going to end my um, infield wandering tour. It is just too damn big to make it across. I, I made it kind of, sort of, around turns three and four, some of the backstretch, but I'm not going to, I'm not even going to bother going over by turns one and two. It's just too big to handle on foot. They do have the trams, the infield trams, much like the trams that bring you from the outside of the track through the tunnel down here to the infield they do have infield trams that sort of get you around you just gotta make sure you ask when you're getting on which part of the infield they're gonna be taking you to so I do need a you can do uh, you can cover some ground without doing all the walking uh, but for now I'm gonna head back into the fan zone because I'm about a half hour away from the Dirks Bentley concert which it's another big draw to having the fan zone ticket get the big pre-race concert so and you get to walk around on the uh grass on the infield some of the track you get to go up by the start finish line walk on the racetrack if you want so let's go check some of that out before we head into our seats So the other, uh, the other big selling point to the fan zone experience is pre-race, uh, along with the, the Dirks Bentley concert or whoever, whatever year you're here and whatever show they got going on, they let you come down. Uh, you cross over from, so all the fan zone stuff like the fan decks over there, uh, the stage with all the foods back there behind that TV. You cross over Pitt Road and come out onto the grass. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, you come down here and uh, you can walk around the grass and take in the view from, honestly, an angle that you don't see any other way uh, as a fan sitting up in the grandstands. It's, it's quite the view to come down here and stand on the track. You can go on the track, go up by the start finish line. There's a lot of people over there this close to the race, but sign the wall, sign the finish line, all that good stuff. And all the cars are out on pit road, which is why the garages are empty the morning of the race. But uh, 
it's really truly uh, a very unique experience to be able to essentially go down on the playing field of uh, the event you're about to watch beforehand. So it's it's pretty cool. Down here by the furthest uh, gates. These are the grandstands down by turn four. We come in down here, pretty much all the way down at the turn four end of the grandstands. This is the grandstand concourse. Um, so when they put all that money into this place, you can definitely see it's got some character. Uh, I mean, a lot of things like like this little Sunoco thing right here like just nice little touches to make it not just a super generic stadium concourse uh, but really I wouldn't say it's anything super unique as far as like food options and drink options go uh, they do a decent enough job of mixing up some stuff but it's you know it's your normal fare you know, hot dogs and cheeseburgers I'll, I'll, I'll try I'll try and make my way down this concourse and show off anything kind of unique you get a lot of these little, you get a lot of these little mini uh, pit shop stands it's the same basic stuff that you got out of the big pit shop tents outside uh, you got your bars kind of kind of full service I guess because they, they'll make you some mixed drinks and sell you some bush light and some Budweiser. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. I, I would definitely say that the Speedway definitely doesn't really specialize in like crazy beer selections. Um, I've, I've definitely seen a lot better at some football games, baseball games and whatnot. down by turn four and then I wanted to jump down to the infield and see some of the Dirk Bentley show so I am now down by turn one and I'm gonna work my way backwards um, there's not much difference between this end and the end I started on down by four as far as this concourse goes and food options it's all pretty uh, Pretty similar, but I'll do the same thing I was doing down there.
like the big, uh, the big official pit shop. Pretty much the equivalent to if you go to a like an NFL stadium and you walk in the pro shop. Very similar. Not really a lot of driver specific stuff. It is in there. You can find some of it, but a lot of it's just Daytona official shirts and hats, stuff like that. Uh, not really gonna bother going in there to show you anything that uh, <laughs> anything that you want to find. Pretty much all on their website, uh, and it's all pretty much the same stuff when I showed you the tent earlier. So as you can see here, the start finish line. Over there's the flag stand, the official starting line uh, for the racetrack. They just kind of extended out here. So this is the halfway point of the concourse. And on each side, you've kind of got what I guess would be considered your, your biggest bar options. Um, they're not really anything super special. Uh, I mean, you walk over to that one. And it's kind of full service. You can get some mixed drinks, but then there's just a couple of refrigerators with beer cans in it. And then same kind of goes for the other side over here. Nothing, uh, nothing spectacular. So thank you, we really appreciate you guys coming out and uh, hopefully we can get in victory lane tonight. All right, have a good time out there. Noah Gregson, he's ready to roll. One of the best personalities here at NASCAR. Daytona 500 victories by the King, Richard Petty. He's a three-time Daytona 500 champion and the 1983 Cup Series champion. Welcome, Bobby Allison. Here he is, two-time Daytona 500 champ and the 1988 Cup Series champion, Bill Elliott. And now, three-time Daytona 500 champion and the man that got the title in 1999, say hello to Dale Jarrett. Next up, three-time Cup Series champion and a four-time Cup Series champion, Jeff Gordon. And now, seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion and the two-time Daytona 500 winner, Jimmy Johnson. Ready to start his final season, the 2007 Daytona 500 champ and 2014 Cup Series champion, Kevin Harvick. The 2017 Daytona 500 champion and 2004 Cup Series champion, Kurt Busch. And the 2015 Daytona 500 champion and two-time Cup Series champ, Joey Logano. Gentlemen, let's get those engines fired up.
have made the difference here? Yeah, I think this whole offseason, Mike just preached how much we all believed in each other. Um, they left me a note on the car that said they believe in me and to go get the job done tonight. I made a few mistakes. We were able to battle back. This Kroger Cottonelle team worked really, really hard this offseason. Great pit stop. out the video for the night here uh, I've already gotten pretty far away from the track got caught caught up trying to get out big crowds uh, but anyway uh, I hope this video came out decently um, I'd like to do more of these in the future if it works out well uh, hopefully it was worth the watch hopefully you learned a few things maybe you didn't plan to learn anything and uh, tuned in by mistake and maybe now you want to go to a NASCAR race I don't know that would be awesome um, Anyway, regardless of uh, what you think, if you've got questions or comments, just want to talk NASCAR, whatever, hit me up. Uh, pretty much, pretty much just Twitter, I guess, at this point, or Instagram. In the loop, Kenny, both of them. Um, but yeah, turned out to be a good day. Had a great time. Learned a few things myself. And um, yeah, let's do more of these in the future. Appreciate it. Later, guys.